everybody, I'm Todd McFarlane, you're watching Afterlife. Make sure you catch up with Big Bad Seek here. What's up everyone welcome back to another episode of seek and destroy and today we're going to take a look at spawn 300 uh, this will be spoiler filled i'm just going to talk about the issue just off the top of my head uh, i'm going to reference old comics old things about the spawn history it might be a long video i'm just kind of ramble and rant at this point uh but uh, oh not in a negative way um overall i thought this book was great i have one critique of the book and it's actually a physical critique it's not even um, like a critique about the story or the elements inside although i have a couple of those but mostly i enjoyed the book thoroughly um, but I do want to talk about a little bit of the history of Spawn and what better way to do that than you know show off the collection uh, that we've been building up to the road to 300 which started with issue 296 it actually started way before a couple issues before that but you know they started putting this on there on the banner on the top and uh, what was really cool is for fans who haven't been around for the whole run of Spawn like I have since like 92 um, you know these two issues came out uh, 296 and 297 and it was the history of Spawn part one and two and basically you learn who Al Simmons is. Al Simmons, of course, is Spawn. He was a soldier of fortune. He worked for the government. He took a bullet for the president. And then at that point, uh, Jason Wynn, who was like this, you know, uh, guy who ran uh, his own company and, and, you know, sold weapons to the military and stuff and hired like assassins to like take out leaders in other countries for the U.S. government. Um, he was kind of like a Lex Luthor type, but he got like his hands really, really, really dirty a lot of times. Well, he uh, hired Al Simmons after he took a bullet for the president and, you know, Al Simmons became like a hero. So he hired Al to work for him and Al met Wanda and there was like a love story there. Uh, but then Al was unable to have children. And so they, but they really wanted, you know, him and Wanda really wanted to have a child, uh, but he was unable to, you know, to do that. And uh, it was just one of the things, like one of the many machinations and the reason I'm bringing all this stuff up is because it all plays out in these two issues uh, where you find out that the devil and hell and heaven, they've been playing this chess game for, you know, ever since the beginning, pretty much uh, of trying to win over humanity in a way or, you know, and trade souls and, and own souls and all these things. And it's this big thing going on. And basically Al Simmons at this point in the story, uh, currently, day is sick of it he's sick of the war between heaven and hell he's sick of the innocent lives that get taken during this war um, and he's sick of the games that are being played and so it turns out he's been sick of it for a long time and he started to learn just exactly what makes him special because there was an element to him that even hell and heaven didn't notice uh, when they made him a spawn when like when hell decided to you know hire him or make him the spawn or dub him to be the new spawn um they did it because he was a soldier of fortune he was great at his job uh but that little that love he had for wanda was pure it kept him connected to humanity and they overlooked that because they were like well look how good of a killer he is look how great he is how emotionless he can be um there must he must be ready to be spawn and they overlooked that one little bit where he actually did care about humanity and cared about his wife a lot and uh, and so because that that is why we're in the knee deep in the crap that we're in now where al simmons is taking the war to heaven and hell uh so it's it's kind of fun i mean the you know, continuity throughout the years has been all over the place um originally spawn when he was al simmons he was betrayed by jason Wynn and he was killed by his friend chapel chapel i guess they can't use they don't have the rights to chapel anymore and so at some point around the time the movie came out in 97, they had to retcon that and they created this uh, character named Jessica Priest who shows up in the latest issue of Spawn 300. And uh, they created her to be the one who kind of actually assassinated or killed and betrayed uh, Al Simmons. Um, so they, you know, they had to play around with that a little bit. Um, and then they killed Malbolgia in issue 100, but also Angela died there. And since Angela was created, I think, by Neil Gaiman, and, you know, when he came in and co-wrote Spawn for a brief time, um, you know, Angela got sucked away into the Marvel Universe. So she died in issue 100, you know, years ago. And, uh, and along with Malbolgia, who was the one who made the deal with Spawn, he said, hey, look, uh, I'll let you go back and see Wanda but you have to lead the armies of hell against heaven and he's like whatever i'll do whatever as long as i can see wanda again and not knowing what he was getting into he gets a symbiote you know not like the venom symbiote but he gets a symbiote it's a suit that makes his costume obviously and it folds around him and moves around him and stuff kind of like a symbiote in a way but you find out later on much later on that they reveal that all the people al simmons killed made up that suit 
So he was literally chained to the souls that he killed and was in a way empowered by them. Um, and that's kind of was the continuity for a while. And then again, like I said, things change. Around issue 200, they had Spawn fight this guy named The Freak and he was teaming up with The Clown uh, who was played by John Linguizamo in the movie. Most of you guys might know The Clown from that if you haven't read the comics. Um, hopefully you've seen the Spawn movie. It's fun, it's not great, but it's fun. The Spawn animated show is amazing. I, I highly recommend all three seasons of that. Um, but so, you know, they he had to team up with his enemy to fight another enemy. And then uh, then there was a guy named Jim Downing. Uh, that was who was Spawn in issue 200. Uh, Jim Downing was a guy that when Spawn in the beginning of the comics, he was able to change his appearance, but he could never change into Al Simmons. Again, it was another joke or twist from the devil or Malbolgia to screw with Al Simmons. So he could turn and look like a human, but he always ended up looking like this random white guy instead of Al Simmons, who, you know, is African-American or black guy. And, uh, and so he's, you know, he could never look like like himself uh, to go see Wanda and stuff. And it turns out Jim Downing was a real person who was in a coma, um, who went into a coma, I think around the time Al Simmons died. And so Al Simmons went to Jim Downing in his coma and awakened him and made him the new spawn while Al went into purgatory. He killed himself because the only way to kill a spawn or a demon or an angel or whatever is to cut their heads off. So Al went and he found a spot in the alleyway that he's always been hanging out in, um, in Rat Alley or whatever it was called. And he was hanging out in there for years in the comic books and what he did was he went and stood on the edge of it because he found out that there was a, a rift there uh, something that he could use in his advantage against the war between heaven and hell and what he did was he ripped his head off to kill himself and his body fell backwards past this threshold into the a realm where he's unable to die in and so since his technically his body died in this side of the threshold he screwed everything up. Jim Downing became Spawn for a while and wore the suit uh, just temporarily until issue 250. Then the suit went back to Al Simmons and he got reawakened and reborn after he had a conversation with God in heaven or in purgatory and was reawakened. And now he sees all the pieces. He's learned how this battle between heaven and hell has been going on for all these years. And because he's a strategist and a military guy, he has now taken the war to, you know, to heaven and hell. And uh, and along the way, though, as he after he's been resurrected, uh, Wanda, who he, you know, he separated where he died and she moved on with her life uh, because Spawn, when he got resurrected, he came back five years later. And when he came back, Wanda was remarried to Spawn's best friend, um, Terry uh, Fitzgerald. And also they had a, a daughter together named Cyan. So she had the life that her and Spawn never could or her and Al never could. And again, that was another twist by hell to mess with him. But all they were doing was just enraging him and building up this want for revenge to get back at both sides because of this big game that they're playing between, you know, the the the, the righteous and the damned. And, uh, and he's like, I'm done with this. I want I want out of here. So as he comes back, he's taking the fight to them and someone on Hell's side screws up and kills Wanda. Uh, and everyone else gets mad about that. And they're trying to figure out who it is because they're like, look, we got to find a way either to bring Wanda back or something because... Now he's he has nothing. We have no leverage over him. We could have held her captive and made him, you know, back down from this fight that he's taken to us. We could have done a lot of things uh, using her as bait or using her as leverage. But now someone's taken that leverage away from us because they think they're king crap and they think they can take on Spawn. And he's too powerful now. So and he knows too much. And he's using he's finding out that it's not just the suit that makes it him special. There's something else. The thing that we all overlooked his his connection to humanity, his want to be a hero and a be a savior uh, that we overlooked and that makes him a good person overall and, and he's using that against us he's using the power of righteousness and damned uh, with those souls that are strapped to him to fight us back and so it's it's been crazy the road to spawn has been crazy so these two issues go over his whole history leading up to what's currently happening which Cogliostro who is uh, spawn's old mentor he is now back in the frame and he's he's here trying to work out a deal with heaven uh, the redeemer who was a guy named Eddie that Al knew uh, has now become a spawn of heaven, which is known as a redeemer. And these archangels that are trapped on earth, because now spawn has cut off the gates from from earth. Nothing from earth can go to heaven now and nothing can go to hell as far as like beings like angels and demons. So everything that's on earth, all the angels, all the demons that are on earth, they're stuck here on earth and they have to fight spawn because there's no other way out for them. And so spawn is just going around cleaning house and he's resurrecting his old villains like Freak um, and, uh, you know, Cygor and Overt Kill. He's resurrecting all these guys uh, to use in his army and he's planting these seeds so he planted a seed in eddie who's the redeemer and they talk a little bit about that in these two issues which is 298 
298 and 299, uh, as the Redeemers and the angels attack him, um, he's planted a seed in them. Jessica Priest, the woman that killed Al Simmons all those years ago, she's back in the picture now, and she's working with Nyx. And Nyx used to be a character named She Spawn. Um, and uh, so now Nyx is, uh, you know, working with Jessica, and they're trying to find out what's going on. The government, uh, basically Spawn found out that all the people on Earth, like government officials, corporations, it's like definitely Todd McFarlane, you know, having a message here about evil corporations and big companies and stuff like that. And it's all these people that are rich and, and everything that have actually made deals with demons or angels to get where they are in life. And uh, some of them didn't really work hard to get there. They took shortcuts and made deals. And uh, the way to attack them is to take away their money. So Spawn found a way to deplete all their bank accounts, get rid of all their money, make them all broke, send chaos, uh, you know, out in the world. And he's doing this and innocent people are dying and he's, he's regretting it. And he's like, hey, I'm, I, you know, I'm trying to save as many people as I can in the actions that I've been taking that hurts everyone. He's going on TV saying, hey, I'm Al Simmons. He can now transform his face to look back like Al Simmons. He's like, I'm Al Simmons. I didn't die. I wasn't killed. The government held me secret for all these years. And these are the secrets I know about them. And he's exposing them. And ever since issue one of Spawn, there's been these like three news broadcasters who have kind of like told the story of, you know, uh, the, 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 the people on the ground's point of view. And so it's like an E entertainment type of person. And then it's like a CNN type of person. And then it's like a Rush Limbaugh kind of guy. And they've always been there since the beginning of the comic books. And, uh, and, you know, he's kind of tying that in, in these new stories, which I kind of like where they all kind of play a purpose. Uh, and you even find out the Rush Limbaugh guy is kind of working for the demons after all these years, probably not since the beginning, but over time, I guess, has decided to uh, keep making deals so he can stay on TV or whatever. So, I don't know. It's kind of fun. You know, it's, it's Todd definitely doing his thing and, and having a little bit of a, uh, you know, a comment in there about, you know, the way the world is, I guess, and how we've all gone to hell pretty much. And uh, and Spawn is trying to fight back against that in, in a way. And he's trying to deplete the bank accounts of all these rich people to make them freak out. And then that can, you know, severs their connections with demons and angels and all this other stuff. And, and it makes their deals null and void, some of them. And it's fun. I don't know. I, I like it. It's absolute chaos and anarchy. But, you know, Spawn and Al really believes this is the only way to free us from heaven and hell. He doesn't want us to be influenced anymore by either side. He wants humans to truly be free. And uh, it's it's a noble cause. I mean, will it you know, will it work out? Probably not. <laughs> but it's it's a noble cause. And I maybe because I like it because I'm a big supernatural fan. And I also I have a, you know angel protection on my arm and demon protection. I also think like that sometimes. Like I if I make a mistake, it's all on me. It's not because some devil whispered in my ear or some angel whispered in my ear to do something right. It's just because I wanted to do it. And uh, you know, so I don't know. Part of me appreciates the message, I guess, in a way. So when this issue starts, by the way, my one critique, like I said, I would make, um, I have Spawn 300 right here, and you guys probably saw my animated version of this that I put online. If I find it on my computer, I'll pop it up right there, but I did an animated version of this, and I think it got over 300 likes, which was cool, because that's the most likes I think I've ever had on Twitter, um, So uh, and it was also nice because it's Spawn issue 300. So I have this copy of the book, uh, and because it's in mint condition, uh, because the other copy I got was banged all to hell, man. Like this corner was all banged up and every copy on the shelf was like this. And I saw that some copies weren't selling because no one wanted to pay $7.99 for a damaged book. But I even saw other reviewers online talking about how their book was damaged too. Now it was, didn't happen everywhere. Obviously a lot of people got good quality books as well. Um, but I do want to make a comment about the quality of the paper. Um, you know, we just got new, you know, Absolute Carnage came out recently. Same page count, roughly about 60 pages of story and artwork. And that's what this is. And they were the same price, $7.99. So I'm fine with that. I'm fine with the price point. It's totally cool with me. Uh, but I just noticed the, the paper quality is really easy to ding. I mean, there's a ding there that it's like there's no way you could have got that ding unless you like, you just push your thumb into it, I guess. But yeah, it was, it's like, oh, come on, man. See it? You can see it kind of reflect there, right in the middle. Um, so it's not even like a full bend down. It's just a, a, a ding there. And then this is just like, like I said, it's all mangled up. And on the inside, it's pretty mangled up too. So, uh, but I really wanted the Capullo cover. And, but I was like, so these are my options. So I was like, you know what? All right, I'll get it. But I'm going to get the J. Scott Campbell cover that I animated uh, so I can have a mint copy of it. <laughs> because I try, I mean, I don't, I'm not that much of a stickler for grading comics or keeping comics in mint condition, but this is Spawn. I have now 300 issues 
of this comic book. Well, I have two versions of issue one. I have the, the uh, director's cut version of it as well, which was signed by Todd McFarlane, um, but I also have the original number one. So I guess I have 301 issues. Uh, but next month, when Spawn 301 comes out, that'll make it a record-breaking book. It'll be the longest-running indie title in comics of all time, uh, which was previously held by Dave Sims with his book Cerberus, and that ended on issue 300. So now Spawn, next month, when that issue comes out, it makes it the longest running indie comic and I'm proud. I mean, like as a fan, I'm like, that's cool. What a cool little medal to have, you know, after all these years and shows that Todd really stuck with it. And he, you know, he broke away from Marvel. He wanted to do his own thing, create his own company. And look where he is now, man. It's it's awesome. I'm very proud of the guy as a fan. I am. Um, so let's talk now. We've talked 15 minutes. We haven't even got to this yet. So let's dive in and talk about this for a few minutes to end the episode. Um, there's a couple different chapters in this book. Uh, the per first one had pencils by J. Scott Cam. Uh, or the first one was Todd McFarlane and Greg Capullo. So Todd McFarlane, uh, he wrote the first uh, story in there. Greg Capullo did the pencils, and then McFarlane did the inks over it. And if you follow his Instagram, you would have seen a lot of these pages because he, he was like, um, he's on a train and he's inking stuff. He's like, I'm on a train to somewhere. And then he's like, his, you know, in a car and he's like, all right, someone's driving the car and I got to ink this page in the car because I got to meet the deadline. And I, I love Todd because he's very blue collar. He keeps his head down and he works. And yeah, he does kind of talk a lot and he has a lot to say. He's a very passionate guy, you know, and I can appreciate that. But he does the work. And that's what I like about him. And it shows and it pays off with this issue, uh, all of his years of hard work. And uh, all the way back to spawn number one when it starts off and it had a little power counter. And it said 9999. That meant uh, spawn was at full power. Now he is near the end of his power. He is almost out of energy. So he's trying to finish this war before he runs out of energy. Or is he? Um, that's the cool thing about this book. So the book starts off and it's like a, a place in uh, uh, Nebraska and it's, you know, people, you know, it's like this young couple, this uh, young millennial couple and they're in love and they, they want to get married. Um, but uh, the, the family of the girl doesn't like the guy. They think he's kind of a, you know, a, <laughs> I don't know, like a soy boy or something. Uh, I hate saying that term, but uh, they, I guess they just think he's kind of a weakling, not really manly, but they're kind of just busting his balls too a little bit. And I'm like, all right, I get it. Like, you know, sometimes you just got to bust back. But I noticed a lot, not a lot of people are like that. I live in LA now, not a lot of people like to bust back. So I haven't busted balls in a long time um, because of that. And I noticed people out here are a little bit different. So it's like, okay, fine. You know, this kid doesn't like getting his balls busted so uh, he does a really random immature thing but it makes sense if you're thinking of youth and stuff uh, and he's a kid in love he takes the girl and they go off and they lope and they get like married you know uh you know somewhere nearby they just drive to a big city and get married real quickly and then they're going to come back and surprise everybody and, and and hopefully piss them off they're like hey if they don't like me too bad i love you and we're going to go off get married and come back and surprise all of them and when they come back though uh the the littlest uh the little sister of the girl that you know getting married um she she snaps or something and she goes through the house and kills everybody uh with a knife and so when the couple comes back they're like hey everybody we're home we got some news for you and then the little girl shows up and she says what have you, you know and the, she's like covered in blood she has a knife and the big sister's like what have you done and she's like i hated them and now and i hate you too and the little girl kills the young couple so i think this is not just maybe a setup for a future story but also it plays right into this uh, right here. This is the news broadcast that talks about how since the stock market's crashing, since all the things that Spawn have done, chaos has fully ensued. Uh, you know, up is down, left is right. People are acting erratically and, and, and freaking out over things. And so I guess this kid snapping is a product of that or it's a product of a demon influencing the kid or something, or maybe there's gonna be a bigger story there. But reading this, you know, uh, kind of helps flesh that out a little bit more. Um, I do know people, and I think I just watched a reviewer earlier, and I'm going to put a link to his review down below because I actually liked his review. He sounded like a really nice guy, and I, I subbed to his channel. It's called like Bargain Bin Reviews or something like that. Um, I'll put a link to his channel down below. I just watched it just a little bit ago, and I was like, oh, man, I got to go record my <laughs> review. So I didn't want to – I didn't watch his whole video because I didn't want to like – I don't like to be influenced by other people's thoughts and stuff. Um, but uh, but I did watch like the first couple minutes, and then I left a comment. I'm like, all right, I'll come back. But I'll put a link down below um, to his – he was saying like the last thing i heard him say was you know you can skip something like this but for me i i it's a yes it's a lazy writing trope technique thing but i think todd is really when he brought it back like 20 issues or whatever ago that he brought it back in um because it was absent for a while in the comics 
I, I liked that he brought it back because there's a purpose for it now, especially when you they reveal that this guy is actually, you know, working with the demons. Um, there, there seems to be more of a purpose of it. Uh, so I liked it. I, I, I don't mind it at all. And it's only one page, so it's fine. But it does kind of explain what's going on in the beginning where people are just like kind of going out of control because that's really the only insight you get to that storyline. And um, for those of you who are thinking this is going to be some big culmination and wrap everything up, it doesn't. This is very much like most big issues like issue 100 kind of felt like it had an ending where it was like spawn killed malbolgia but then they left it with well is he going to take over and be the king of hell next and he chose not to and then because he didn't there was a power vacuum where angels and demons were fighting to be the new king of hell and al let them do that and while they were doing that he was learning the game and getting more powerful so they all these things even though there's some a lot of retcons going on it looks like McFarlane went back and was like, let's take these threads and like, let's try to put a reason behind it. And I can, I, again, I can appreciate that. It, it's nice that he's trying his best because obviously 300 issues is a lot to kind of keep all together in your head, even if you are the creator of the series and stuff. And he wasn't always the writer on the book either or the artist. So, you know, you can imagine he's got, he's got to go back and, and do some research and think about a lot of these plot threads, but he pulled it all together and I really like it. And they even make references to, you know, his monster mode, Al Simmons turns back into a human. Um, they they have moments like that and then he goes to albania which is uh something he was hinted at that he needed to go to in the last issue um and it's it's great like the action's really great and when he gets there he finds out that the clown has been resurrected uh you know the violator is back in a new form in a new body and uh, he's teamed up with this angel uh named godsend and he's like a grim reaper angel type and the two of them are here and they're working side by side and they reveal that uh that this new clown this new version of clown because spawn killed the last version decapitated him and left his head on a pike uh now he's ascended or you know reformed in some way and or is exists in a new body or in a new format or something like that or he's like the king of violators I, i'm not fully sure on that but it, they, he does call him violator so i'm like all right he's he's violator i guess he's just re resurrected as violator um but he reveals that he's the one who killed wanda and so Al's like, well, that's all I needed to hear. And the two of them go at it. And there's this great, great Capullo artwork here where he actually made Violator big and monstrous and buff. Because I always liked his design before where he was really skeletal and skinny looking. And he whispered in like an animated series, he whispered in your head. And I thought that was amazing how they did that. But of course, Greg Capullo is going to bring a different style to it. And it's a different form of Violator. And this is monstrous. Because now at this point, Spawn is, it's like, I look at it like Resident Evil. Like Chris Redfield was kind of a skinny, in-shape guy in the first Resident Evil. But by Resident Evil 6, you know, he in 5, he's just like this big hulking mass. That's how, you know, Spawn is now. He's just this big hulking dude. So a giant skinny monster with brittle bones that he can break isn't as terrifying anymore, especially since he's fought him for 300 issues so this new form where he can actually go toe-to-toe -to -toe with spawn was pretty great and he does he mops the floor with spawn he just kicks the living crap out of al throughout this whole book and he rips the costume off and walks away and uh and i i was reading this going like holy crap like the suit's gone what's you know what's gonna happen uh you know what is he gonna use the suit for um what do they have planned this this factory in albania apparently this was their last stand. They're like, we're going to poison the whole world if we can't rule it now because you're bringing this you know, war to us and you're going to try to kill all of us. Well, you've already killed so many of us and there's very few of us left. So, you know, we're just going to poison the planet and no one's going to have it. And every human's just going to die and wherever their souls go, whatever, it doesn't matter. It doesn't, we don't care anymore. We're just going to end it all um, out of spite against you, Spawn. And, uh, and so what Spawn does is he gets nailed to the wall. His suit gets ripped off. The villains walk away, but he's been saving those seeds that he planted all over the place and even in himself that humanity that love for humanity that he has he let it sit and stew and then he let the spark ignite and what he did was it caused the building to explode he destroyed all the chemicals everything in like a couple mile radius or whatever was wiped out and destroyed uh, and then he comes out emerges from the fire and fully powered uh, you know even though it's like his power meter and the book ends with it going to back down to like one you know point 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 one or whatever um, he comes out and he's like putting nails in his arm and he grabs a skull, a skull of one of the workers that was making the poison and puts it on his stomach as like a belt and he recreates himself as spawn <laughs> like i mean i don't know it, it's very tribal and interesting and it's a it's a cool approach uh but it's also al like al's really never looked like al he did recently in the comics but he really hasn't he's always been a burnt dude this is 
definitely something new that they're going to try to do where he's kind of got this new form where he looks like Al Simmons and he grabbed like the Albanian flag to like wrap it around. So he had a red cape and it was like, okay, so I guess that's why he made it set in Albania was, you know, Todd was like, I want like a red cape around him at some point. So he grabs the flag and wraps it around him. Uh, then he shoves nails through his arms, the ones that held him on the wall to make the spikes. He grabs barbed wire to make the chains on his arm. And yeah, he's like a walking penance. It's, it's insane. <laughs> it's insane. Uh, so yeah, I don't know. I like it it looked cool it's very uh gruff and manly and awesome um and sometimes that's okay i like reading stuff like that so uh and then it ends the book or this chapter ends with zero 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 one and there you go that's where this storyline kind of ends so um yeah really good book i know i just recapped and, and kind of gave a lot of it away um so again i hope you go read it yourself there is a lot more to the story so this stuff I won't spoil uh, because this will, you know, if you read those Redeemer issues, they Spawn took Redeemer, Eddie, into the darkness and they were gone for, it seemed like just a, like half a minute or so, but really in the darkness, they existed there for a while and Spawn did something to Eddie um, to like, uh, you know, plant the seed in him or awaken the seed in him. So there's some cool stuff going on there that I don't really want to spoil here, but that's going to definitely be a setup to another story. Um, and then also, uh, you have the guy like that little computer nerd guy that's working with spawn and spawn went and saved him and put him out in the middle of nowhere. And these two angels show up to take him out, but he gets, there's, there's a reveal there too. Um, especially if you're like, I like the Jim Downing stuff. I didn't love it. I still missed Al Simmons while Jim Downing was spawn, but there's a great reveal in this book for those of you who might be Jim Downing fans. Um, I thought it was cool at least. Uh, then there's also a great moment with Nix at the end of this book where she's teamed up with Jessica Priest and they're nearing the answers that they're looking for, but then something tragically happens to one of them. And then the other one transforms into a, uh, a new character. Uh, so or a new form of an old character, I guess. Um, and then the last book is just like, or the last chapter is like this two page story of someone walking up these stairs to this like a giant cave of wonders looking place uh, in the afterlife, I think it is. So um, yeah, good stuff. So I don't want to spoil all that. I would just say go buy this issue. Um, the first story though was awesome. It had a lot of great moments in it. The action is great. Greg Capullo doing the pencils and, and Todd on the inks is fantastic. And then they have this great image here for Spawn 300, which comes out October 2nd, 2019. I think the price goes to $4.99 for this issue. But normally Spawn books are only $2.99. That's why I love collecting them. But uh, these two are big milestone issues that they're celebrating. This is obviously the record-breaking issue. So there's a little bit more to it, and that's why it's $4.99. And once again, you got Todd McFarlane and Greg Capullo coming back to wrap up their little story that they're doing with Spawn versus the new clown um, and Godsend. And then you have Jason Sean Alexander, uh, who wrote one or drew one of the backup issues and has kind of been the monthly artist on the normal books, on the regular books leading up to this. So I'm glad he's still working on this because I love his style. And then Clayton Crane comes in for a little bit. Then we have Alex Ross, uh, Bill Sienkiewicz. I think Clayton Crane does a, a variant cover. Matina does a cover and Drona Pena does a cover. And I think a, a short story. I know he did the last two pages of this book, but hopefully he'll flesh that out more in the next issue too so i'm loving it i mean if you're not a spawn fan i would say get this issue but don't read it until you read the the history of spawn go pick up these two issues if you can i think they went to second printing so you should be able to find them at your local comic store or on comiXology if you want the digital ones but it's spawn number 296 and 297 if you read these two they will set up everything that's going on they kind of do a, a quick brush over of everything that happened from spawn number one all the way to 295 and they kind of just touch on it briefly they do retcon a lot of stuff but it's a it's a very clean history of spawn it's a very clean look at his life and his history so i would say if you want to just know everything about the character that is important to the story that they're telling pick up these two issues and i'm hoping what they do in a trade paperback is i'm hoping they put 296 through uh, 290 or uh, 2301 two, maybe um, all of that in one trade. I hope they do something like that, or at least up to 300 in one trade. But I, I think they're doing uh, 296 to 299 in trade paperback, uh, which is fine because it'll probably only be like 10 bucks or something, or or 15 bucks. So that's not bad at all. But um, I don't know I, if you're out there and you want to know more about Spawn, pick up the history of Spawn. And I will make other Spawn videos at some point in, on the Seek and Destroy show. Here we'll probably talk about the animated series. We'll probably review the movie at some point. Um, we'll, we'll, you'll see more Spawn content, but I just, I can't commit to a full Spawn show right now, uh, just because of everything else I have going on, but we will talk about Al Simmons, uh, you know, occasionally 
on this show on Seek and Destroy. So make sure you tune in, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on any of our Spawn conversations. And speaking of conversations, if you have any thoughts on this issue or anything that's happened before, any of the other issues I talked about, or any of the, the animated series or the movie, whatever it is, anything Spawn related that you want to talk about, the toys, anything, talk about it down in the comments below and we'll continue our conversation down there. Thanks so much for watching the show. As always, please go buy this book. Support Indie Comics. Uh, you know, I know Image is now up there in like the top three. So some people are like, oh, it's not really indie anymore. It's still, but trust me, it had grassroots beginning. It had a very blue collar business model. And these guys hustle and work just like everyone in comics do, even in the big two companies. Uh, everyone works really hard. Uh, but uh, I, this is, to me, has been my favorite indie book for years and years and years. And I'm so glad to celebrate issue 300. Uh, it, it just is so exciting for me. And I can't wait for 301. So you can guarantee that we will, if not between now and then, definitely on October 2nd, we'll come back with another episode where we'll talk about issue 301 of Spawn. Thanks so much. See you in the future. Peace.